The following program is the safety training program for Defender team members at CTNA. It must be taken at the time of hire. Please give this program your undivided attention. Our safety mission is to establish a proactive path in the continuous pursuit of zero accidents. All team members, from the most senior manager to the newest hourly team member, are expected to identify safety risks and to take action before accidents occur. Team member responsibilities. Perform all tasks in a safe manner. Help your coworkers to work safely. Report all situations or conditions that could lead to an accident. Recommend improvements to your supervisor. Follow all employee conduct and rules. Uniform policy. You must have your ID card each day or you cannot get in. In the event you forget it, call your supervisor. You must have your company shirt and vest while working here or disciplinary action will happen. Defender proper dress code. Safety shoes still toed. Defender shirt or vest. Safety glasses. Long pants or shorts, preferably denim or woven cotton. Shorts must be mid-thigh or longer. No revealing, see-through, or baggy clothing. No spaghetti strap shirts or clothing with slogans or sayings that are offensive or inappropriate. All clothes must be clean and in decent shape. Sunglasses or any other form of visual obstruction are prohibited to be worn in the plant. All clothes must project professionalism. CTNA Basic 7 Rules Never run equipment without guards in place. Report missing guards and guards in poor repair to your supervisor. Never reach into or work on equipment that is moving or equipment that is in automatic mode. Never render safety devices incapable of working as designed and intended. Follow the established plant lockout procedures as established for the piece of equipment that you are operating, setting up, adjusting, or repairing. Never remove someone else's lockout without specific authorization from the owner of a lock. Unauthorized removal of someone else's lockout may result in termination. Never work over or under a running mill. You must have your supervisor's approval and follow proper lockout procedure if a task requires you to get on a conveyor. Always cut away from yourself when using a sharp object of any type. Knife, scissors, blades, etc. Plant policy states that team members are to only enter through walkthrough doors. Overhead doors are for forklift traffic only. Team members who do not adhere to this policy will be suspended and possibly terminated for not following this. Defender safety rules. Be aware of your surroundings. Read and observe all signage and postings. Forklift traffic is heavy. Look each way when walking in plant area and crossing intersections. All team members must be in uniform and wearing proper PPE at the start of the shift. All team members working or passing through warehouse must wear a yellow or orange safety vest. No cell phone usage while in your work area at break times only. This applies to all the team members. Supervisors may use the company phone, but no cell phone use while in motion on equipment or while walking. Always receive proper training before doing a job. If you don't receive the training, please contact your supervisor. Example, new machine or equipment, new position or chemical, or new hire. If you see blood, do not touch it. Make sure to notify your supervisor right away. Earplugs are the only acceptable things to be worn in the ears. Before you use any equipment, make sure that you are fully aware of safety rules for that equipment. Also, follow the proper equipment operator rules and conduct equipment checks, inspections before and after each use. You will be trained and certified before operating equipment. No fast driving on fork trucks or scrubbers. Seat belts must be worn at all times. Employees are not allowed to be outside of the turnstiles during their shift. Always wear gloves when emptying trash cans. Never reach into trash cans for any reason. No eating in the plant, only in break rooms. Employees are not allowed to work out in the work fit area. Rings are not allowed to be worn while working on the floor. Loose jewelry, 
rings, watches, and loose clothing are prohibited. Pictures are not permitted to be taken inside the plant. Any kind of music while on the floor or on equipment is prohibited. All safety rules will be enforced. Please make sure that the CTNA Basic 7 are followed the same as the Defender Safety Rules. Disciplinary action will be taken if any above rules are violated. Accidents. Team members must report an accident incident to a Defender Supervisor within the first 15 minutes. Team member and supervisor accident reports need to be completed in writing before the end of the shift. Any team member involved in a work-related injury or property damage incident must submit to a drug and alcohol test. Employees that are using a prescription medication that may impair his or her mental ability or containing a controlled substance must report this to the office. Employees prescribed narcotics cannot be in the facilities. Refusal to submit to a drug test will result in suspension pending termination. Cell phones. Unauthorized cell phone usage, which includes texting, is allowed only during break and lunch times in break areas or outside. No cell phone use while moving through manufacturing area, walking, riding, driving, etc. If using cell phone while in pedestrian walkway, you must stop and get out of the traffic flow. Authorized cell phone is one that has been provided by Defender. Conduct. Employees shall not engage in horseplay or any activity which could cause injury to the employee or to others. Running is not permitted in the plant unless responding to an emergency situation. Team members are expected to obey the instruction of security personnel. Security is here to assist in matters of safety, security, vandalism, and traffic control. Team members shall obey all posted safety signs, traffic signs, and traffic markings while on company property such as stop signs, no parking signs, etc., including those signs posted inside the facility. Obey all plant notice, danger, caution, and other warning signs, notices, etc. Smoke shacks. Team members cannot smoke anywhere but the designated smoke shacks. Failure to comply with this policy will result in termination. Equipment. Only trained and authorized personnel should be permitted to operate forklifts, man lifts, tuggers, jeeps, walkies, etc. No riders are permitted. Each equipment operator must do a pre-shift inspection every day before operating the equipment and submit this to their supervisor prior to using the equipment. Post-shift inspections must be done and submitted to their supervisor at the end of each shift. Scrubber and mop water dumping procedure. Anyone who operates a scrubber or empties mop water must do so at the dump station beside Mixer 7 or in an approved tote or container. Oil should not be put into the dump station at any time but should be introduced into the oil pump behind Mixer 9. At no time should a scrubber driver or someone emptying their mop bucket do so in anything other than the dump station or approved tote. If you are aware of anyone dumping into any area outside the plant or inside the plant in an unapproved container, you must make the Defender Contract Manager aware as well as the EHS department. If anyone is caught dumping outside or in an unapproved container, this could be a terminable offense. Thank you for your help in preventing water pollution at Mount Vernon Continental Tire Facility. Oil and water tote. In the event that the dump station is not working, we will only use designated totes marked with a red X. Would you know what to do if there was a fire in your building? Know your closest escape routes and exits. Know where to meet outside away from the danger. Your supervisor will want to get a head count to make sure everyone is safe. Emergency response. Total plant evacuation. In the event of a total plant evacuation, the assembly areas for all personnel 
have been identified on the evacuation map posted in each department. The management in your department is responsible for making sure each person for whom he or she is responsible for fully understands the evacuation route, procedures, and assembly areas. CTNA Emergency Response Evacuation All personnel shall evacuate the plant along their designated escape route and gather at their designated holding areas. No team member shall re-enter the plant until instructed by his or her supervisor. Do not use an elevator. Stairs should always be used in an emergency situation. During the evacuation, personnel should not run, lag behind, or make unnecessary noises that could cause confusion. Evacuation signal, solid 30 second tone, followed by a five second break, and then repeated on the simplex fire alarm system. Emergency response, weather signal, solid 10 second tone, followed by a five second break, then repeated on the simplex fire alarm system. Tornado procedures. In the event of a tornado, all departments will be notified via the plant intercom system, fire system, and by management. Active shooter, repeating two second tone, followed by a two second break. Emergency response. Shelter locations. Main lunchroom, administration break room, tire tech conference room, maintenance storeroom, JV truck assembly break room, warehouse office, truck final lunchroom, JV extruding lunchroom, passenger stock prep lunchroom, headcount. Each supervisor shall take a roll call and provide a status report to the department manager or senior manager representative. The all clear signal. When it is safe to re-enter the plant resume, defender team members follow same instructions as CTNA. Prevents slips and falls. Squeegeeing, wet floor mopping, use the figure eight motion, wet floor signs, overhead water leaks, equipment leaks, keep your eyes on the path. Accidents, you must tell your supervisor about any accidents or injuries immediately when they happen. Report even minor accidents to your supervisor right away. You will need to fill out a team member report in your own words and your supervisor will need to fill out another report. Workers' Comp Fraud Prevention Fraud is a crime. Faking or exaggerating an injury is fraud and is a crime. All incidents are investigated thoroughly. If fraud is discovered, the team member will be terminated and legal action will be taken. Cleaning chemicals. All bottles should be labeled correctly as shown. If not labeled, do not use. Safety data sheets. SDS are available for all chemicals you may be required to use and are available in the safety office. All team members need to know the chemicals they work with. Globally Harmonized System of Classification and Labeling of Chemicals, GHS, Hazard Communication, 2012. What is GHS? In March of 2012, OSHA released its final rule on the GHS Hazard Communication Standard. The intent of this worldwide program is to standardize data on chemicals so that health, physical and environmental hazards of chemicals are presented in a consistent manner and can be recognized regardless of the country of origin. GHS, why should you care? The benefits. The new standard covers over 43 million workers who produce or handle hazardous chemicals in more than 5 million workplaces across the country. The modification is expected to prevent over 500 workplace injuries and illnesses and 43 fatalities annually. Three major changes to the OSHA HAZCOM 2012 standard. One, hazard classifications. Two, labels. Three, safety data sheets. Hazard communication safety data sheets, MSDS versus SDS. Companies must provide safety data sheets, SDS, formerly known as material safety data sheets or MSDSs 
to communicate the hazards of chemical products. Always know where the SDS binder is located. SDSs provide more detailed information than what is on the label. SDS Safety Data Sheets, Defender and CTNA. Do you know where your SDS book is located? Check with your supervisor if you are not sure. All SDS books are in the safety office. Know the hazards of the chemicals you work with. Read the label. Better yet, read the SDS. Supervisors, please make sure to educate all team members on your shift. SDS Section Standardized. 16 sections. 1. Identification. 2. Hazard identification. 3. Composition. Information on ingredients. 4. First aid measures. 5. Firefighting measures. 6. Accidental release measures. 7. Handling and storage. 8. Exposure controls. Personal protection. SDS sections. 9. Physical and chemical properties. 10. Stability and reactivity. 11. Toxological information. 12. Ecological information. 13. Disposal information. 14. Transport information. 15. Regulatory information. 16. Other information. Signal words. Use only one signal word that represents the highest hazard level for the material. Danger, more serious or severe. Warning less serious or severe. Hazardous chemical pictograms. The pictogram on the left describes explosives, self-reactives, organic peroxides. The pictogram in the center, flammables, pyrophorics, self-heating, emits flammable gas, self-reactives, organic peroxides. The pictogram on the right, oxidizer. Hazardous chemical pictograms. The pictogram on the left is gas under pressure. The pictogram in the middle, skin corrosion burns, eye damage, corrosive to metals. The pictogram on the right, acute toxicity, fatal or toxic. Hazardous chemical pictograms. The pictogram on the left, irritant, skin and eye, skin sensitizer, acute toxicity, harmful, narcotic effects, respiratory tract, irritant. The pictogram on the right, carcinogen, mutagenicity, reproductive toxicity, target organ toxicity, aspiration toxicity. This pictogram represents environmental non-mandatory. PPE, Personal Protective Equipment, CTNA. Personal Protective Equipment, PPE examples. Eye, safety glasses, goggles, face, face shields, head, hard hats, feet, safety shoes, hand and arms, gloves, bodies, vests, hearing, Earplugs, earmuffs. Require team members to wear selected PPE in the workplace. All team members must be in uniform at all times. Protecting employees from workplace hazards. Employers must protect employees from workplace hazards such as machines, hazardous substances, and dangerous work procedures that can cause injury. Employers must use all feasible engineering and work practice controls to eliminate and reduce hazards. Then use appropriate personal protective equipment if these controls do not eliminate the hazard. Remember, PPE is the last level of control. Training. Employees required to use PPE must be trained to know at least the following. When PPE is necessary. What type of PPE is necessary. How to properly put on, take off, adjust, and wear. The limitations of the PPE. Proper care. Maintenance useful life, and disposal. What are some of the causes of eye injuries? Dust and other flying particles, such as metal shavings or sawdust, acids and other caustic liquid chemicals that might splash, 
blood and other potentially infectious body fluids that might splash, spray, or splatter, intense light such as that created by welding and lasers. Safety glasses, made with metal plastic safety frames, used for moderate impact from particles produced by such jobs as carpentry, woodworking, grinding, and scaling, required when using any chemical, required when operating forklifts and scrubbers. Goggles, protect eyes, eye sockets, and the facial area immediately surrounding the eyes from impact, dust, and splashes. Some goggles fit over corrective lenses. Face shields. Protect the face from nuisance, dust, and potential splashes or sprays of hazardous liquids. Do not protect employees from impact hazards. Required for filling propane tanks. What are some of the causes of head injuries? Falling objects, bumping head against fixed objects, such as exposed pipes or beams, contact with exposed electrical conductors. Protect your hearing. Imagine your life without sound. Hearing problems affect every aspect of life. 15 million Americans have hearing loss. Once you lose your hearing, you will never get it back. Most people are unaware of the damage until it's too late. When is noise harmful? Loudness is measured in decibels. Normal conversation, 60 decibels. Busy traffic, 75 decibels. Woodshop noise, 100 decibels. Chainsaw, 110 decibels. Hearing can be damaged if exposed to 85 decibels for an average of eight hours. 140 decibels for any period of time. Disposable earplugs expand and conform to the shape of your ear canal. Clean hands before handling. After insertion, test effectiveness. Your eardrum is safe. Ear evaluations. Hearing monitor with yearly audiograms. If hearing deteriorates, you will be fitted with new hearing protection. What are some of the causes of foot injuries? Heavy objects such as barrels or tools that might roll onto or fall on an employee's feet. Sharp objects such as nails or spikes that might pierce the soles or uppers of ordinary shoes. Hot or wet surfaces, slippery surfaces. Safety shoes and boots. Steel-toed boots, shoes required. Slip-resistant soles are required. Water-resistant safety shoes boots recommended in the mixing department. What are some of the hand injuries you need to guard against? Burns, bruises, abrasions, cuts, punctures, fractures, amputations, chemical exposures. Types of gloves. Nitrile provides protection against a wide variety of solvents, harsh chemicals, fats, and petroleum products, and also provides excellent resistance to cuts, snags, punctures, and abrasions. What is a bloodborne pathogen? Definition, bloodborne pathogens are microorganisms present in human blood or any bodily fluid. Saliva, semen, vaginal secretions, vomit with blood, human excrement, or other. Blood can transmit AIDS, hepatitis B and C, and sexually transmittable diseases. Hepatitis B can live in dried blood for 23 days. For any blood or bodily fluid spill, see your supervisor. Only supervisors will clean these types of spills. Awareness training does not permit team members to clean up larger blood or bodily fluid spills. Exposure control. Team members shall immediately contact their supervisor whenever bodily fluids, blood, human excrement, vomit, etc. are encountered. Team members are not to clean the bodily fluids. This awareness training does not allow team members to perform cleanup of bodily fluids. Team members are to block off the area and ensure no one has access to come into contact with the fluid. Lockout tagout. What is lockout tagout? 
It is a method of keeping equipment and machinery from being set in motion and endangering employees during servicing and maintenance. When properly used, it prevents serious injury and death. Lockout. The placement of a lockout device to block the flow of energy from a power source to a piece of equipment. Tagout. The process of attaching a tag to a disconnect switch or other energy isolating device to warn others not to restore energy to the tagged equipment. Zero energy state. The release of all stored energy from a power source. Key definitions. One, authorized employee. One who can physically lock or tag out a machine to do service or maintenance work. Two, affected employee. One who either operates equipment that can be locked and tagged out or works in an area where lockout tagout is used. What is a lockout tagout system? Special covers, chains, or other devices are used to help secure the energy isolation device in the safe position. If equipment cannot be locked out, a special tag is used to warn workers of the danger of starting up the machine and additional precautions are taken. Why lockout tagout? Machinery that starts up unexpectedly while someone is performing maintenance or repairs can be a serious hazard. Only authorized employees are permitted to perform lockout tagout procedure and to remove the locks and tags once work is completed. General lifting safety guidelines. Check load for weight to take the necessary precautions. Test the load for stability. Wear the appropriate shoes to avoid slipping, tripping, or falling. Wear proper gloves for the task. Lift only as much as you can handle on your own without straining. If the load is too heavy, get help. Use the buddy system. General lifting safety guidelines. Keep the load in your power zone or core. This is the area above your knees, below your shoulders, and close to your body. Exercise caution while lifting unstable loads. Get a secure grip and use both hands. Use smooth, even motions. Use your legs to lift up the load. Avoid using your back. General lifting safety guidelines. Avoid lifting from the floor and do not bend at the waist. Hold the load near your body and lift with your legs, not your back. Special Equipment Operation Golf Carts Special Training and Certification Required Ride-On Scrubbers Special Training and Certification Required Daily Inspection Form Powered Industrial Lifts Forklifts, Tuggers, Walkies Special Training and Certification Required Daily Inspection Form Scissor Lifts Boom Lifts Special Training and Certification Required Confined Space Awareness Many workplaces contain areas that are considered confined spaces because while they are not necessarily designed for people, they are large enough for workers to enter and perform certain jobs. A confined space also has limited or restricted means for entry or exit and is not designed for continuous occupancy. Confined spaces include, but are not limited to, tanks, vessels, silos, storage bins, hoppers, vaults, pits, manholes, tunnels, equipment housings, ductwork, pipelines, etc. Asbestos awareness. Your risk increases if your work area contains friable asbestos, such as sprayed on insulation. You work near a construction or renovation area which contains asbestos. You are engaged in maintenance or custodial activities in areas containing asbestos. Asbestos Awareness Continued When cleaning areas containing friable asbestos containing materials, use dampened mops, do not use brooms, do not use traditional vacuums, stay away from damaged materials containing asbestos, look for asbestos warning labels. Active Shooter Emergency Profile of an Active Shooter An active shooter is an individual actively engaged in killing or attempting to kill people in a confined and populated area. In most cases, active shooters use firearms and there is no pattern or method to their selection of victims. 
Active shooter situations are traumatic, unpredictable, and evolve quickly. Typically, the immediate deployment of law enforcement is required to stop the shooting and mitigate harm to victims. Because active shooter situations are often over within 10 to 15 minutes, before law enforcement arrives on the scene, individuals must be prepared both mentally and physically to deal with an active shooter situation. This training should be considered applicable not only for work, but any environment. Due to the unpredictable, complex, and evolving nature of an active shooter situation, it will be up to the individual to determine, based on their individual capabilities, which option or combination of options within run, hide, or fight is best suited for their immediate safety. However, the order of run, hide, or fight is critical. If you can run, do so. If not, hide. If these are not options or no longer options, you are left with fight. How to respond when an active shooter is in your vicinity. Quickly determine the most reasonable way to protect your own life. Run, hide, or fight in that order. Number one, option, run. Evacuate, run. If there's an accessible escape path, attempt to evacuate the premises. Be sure to have an escape route and plan in mind. Evacuate regardless of whether others agree to follow. Leave your belongings behind. Help others escape if possible. Prevent individuals from entering an area where the active shooter may be. Keep your hands visible. Follow the instructions of any police officers. Number two option, hide. Hide out if evacuation is not possible. Find a place to hide where the active shooter is less likely to find you. Your hiding place should be out of the active shooter's view, concealed. Provide protection if shots are fired in your direction. Cover behind machinery or other substantial object. Do not restrict your options for movement. To prevent an active shooter from entering your hiding place, lock the door. Blockade the door with heavy furniture, equipment, etc. Silence cell phones, darken the room, stay low as possible. Remember to always choose when possible cover over concealment. Concealment only provides a visual barrier to detection. Bullets may penetrate. Cover provides a visual barrier as well as an armored protection aspect. How to respond when law enforcement arrives. Law enforcement's purpose is to stop the active shooter as soon as possible. Officers will proceed directly to the area in which the last shots were heard. Officers may shout commands and may push individuals to the ground for their safety. All individuals are suspect until shooter is identified. Remain calm and follow officer's instructions. Put down any items in your hands, bags, jackets, etc. Immediately raise hands and spread fingers. Keep hands visible at all times. Avoid making quick movements toward officers such as holding on to them for safety. Do not stop to ask officers for help or direction when evacuating. Just proceed in the direction from which officers are entering the premises. Information to provide to law enforcement or 911 operator. Location and number of the active shooters. Physical description of the shooters. Number and type of weapons held by the shooters number of potential victims at the location. Note, the first officers to arrive to the scene will not stop to help injured persons until the threat is neutralized. Good practices for coping with an active shooter situation. Be aware of your environment and any possible dangers. Take note of the two nearest exits in any facility you visit. If you're in an office when an incident starts, stay there and secure the door. Turn off lights, Mute cell phones, stay away from doors and windows, stay as low as possible. If you're in an open area, get into a room and secure the door if evacuation is not possible. As a last resort, attempt taking the active shooter down. When the shooter is at a close range and you cannot flee, your chance of survival is much greater if you try to incapacitate him or her. Call 911 when it is safe to do so. Do not leave the property until released by authorities. Restroom cleaning procedures. Remember these three rules of restroom cleaning. Rule number one, always clean top to bottom. Rule number two, clean from dry to wet. 
Rule number three, work towards the exit door. Cleaning toilets and urinals. As you know, toilets and urinals can be tough and unpleasant to clean. By applying the proper disinfectant to the bowls ahead of time, your job will be less troublesome with cleaner results. First, flush each unit. This is done to ensure that the unit is free of contamination and determine if it's working properly. Report any damage or malfunction units to your supervisor or maintenance department. It is a good practice to backflush commodes before cleaning. Do this by inserting the bowl mop several times into the bowl throat, forcing the water up and over the bowl trap. This eliminates the water in the bowl, allowing more of the surface to be cleaned and less dilution of the cleaner. For urinals, remove debris with your gloves on and place the urinal screen on a paper towel while you clean. Apply a disinfectant solution to the interior and exterior surfaces of all urinals and toilets. Let it stand and move on to dry cleaning. High dusting. Practicing the top to bottom rule, begin by using a long handled high duster to remove dust from ceiling corners, wall vents, tops of partitions, door frames, window sills, light fixtures, and other areas that may gather dust. Paper towel dispensers, toilet tissue dispensers, soap dispensers, mirrors and glass surfaces, sinks and countertops, sweep, mop, trash removal, empty all trash receptacles and dispose units for sanitary napkins, remove the contents and replace the liners, never compress the trash and always be careful of sharp objects that may be sticking out of the liners. Proper PPE must be worn at all times. Safety glasses, nitro gloves, steel toe shoes, or boots. Prohibited conduct. Falsification of employment records, information, or other company records, whether by misrepresentation or omission, dishonesty, theft of, or deliberate careless damage, destruction to any company property, or the property of any team member customer. Removing or borrowing company property without prior authorization, unauthorized use of company equipment, time, materials, or facilities. Fighting, provoking a fight, or assault during working hours or on company customer property. Participating in horseplay or practical jokes on company time or on company customer premises. Carrying firearms or any other dangerous weapons on company customer premises at any time engaging in criminal conduct on company customer premises or engaging in criminal conduct elsewhere that adversely impacts the company's reputation and or the team member's ability to perform his or her job, causing, creating, or participating in a disruption of any kind during working hours on company property. Prohibited conduct. Insubordination, including but not limited to Failure or refusal to obey the orders or instructions of a supervisor or member of management or the use of abusive threatening language toward a coworker, supervisor, customer, or member of management. Using abusive foul language at any time on company, customer premises. Failure to notify a supervisor in advance when unable, unable to report to work. Failure to obtain permission to leave work for any reason during normal working hours. Failure to provide a physician certificate when requested or required to do so. Sleeping or malingering on the job. Excessive break times or unauthorized breaks or being out of your assigned work area. Making or accepting personal telephone calls during working hours, except in cases of emergency or extreme circumstances. Wearing extreme, unprofessional, or inappropriate styles of dress or hair while working. Violation of the drug-free work policy. Reporting to work under the influence of any medication that may impair a team member's safety performance or the safety of others. Failure to work any required overtime. Zero tolerance drug policy. Prohibited conduct. Waste, destruction, discarding or removing work material or equipment without obtaining proper approval from management. Negligence or carelessness. Failure to promptly report any accident or injury within 15 minutes violating stated company policies on affirmative action, equal employment opportunity, or anti-harassment, failure to return to work upon the expiration of an approved leave of absence, recording of conversations with a tape recorder or other recording device, including a cell phone or any electronic device, unless prior approval is received from management, 
The purpose of this policy is to eliminate a chilling effect to the expression of view that may exist when one person is concerned that his or her conversation with another is being secretly recorded. This concern can inhibit spontaneous and honest dialogue, especially when sensitive confidential matters are being discussed. Any conduct that adversely impacts upon the company. Team members are not to go to the customer about any Defender Services business, including pay, safety, HR business, complaints. You should report anything needing address to your supervisor, manager, or office staff. Any damage to company property will be investigated and could result in termination. Team members deemed responsible for damages will be charged and deducted from their payroll. The importance of environmental protection. The process of manufacturing tires is one that has the potential to affect the environment for a long time, if care is not taken. Environmental damage can last for decades or longer. We must constantly review the aspects of our manufacturing processes to determine their impact on the environment and plan our activities to minimize those impacts. It is vitally important for all employees to know what we as a company do to protect the environment and to understand their role in helping to preserve it. Concepts every employee must know. Environmental aspect. Any element of an organization that can interact with the environment. Environmental impact. Any change to the environment resulting from an organization's activities, products, or services. This can be positive or negative. Environmental objectives a plant-specific environmental goal. EMS concepts every employee must know. The Mount Vernon plant has four potential environmental impacts. Discharging pollutants to the air, discharging pollutants to soil, discharging pollutants to water, consuming natural resources. Identifying the process aspects and assessing the severity of their environmental impacts in each of these areas is essential to creating and maintaining programs that minimize the effect each aspect has on the environment. Preventing and Minimizing Air Pollution The Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, or IEPA, issues air permits which allow manufacturing facilities to emitted air pollutants into the atmosphere. The Mount Vernon plant currently has eight air permits, which covers over 400 emission points throughout the plant. These permits list pollution limits on certain manufacturing equipment, particularly mixers and curing trenches. Preventing and minimizing air pollution. The exhaust from every rubber mixer passes through ultra-fine filters and dust collectors. Similarly, Fugitive dust particles from small compound mixing are exhausted from the area and captured by dust collectors for recycling. As well as protecting the environment, this helps keep potentially harmful chemicals away from employees. Preventing and minimizing air pollution. Due to stricter emission limits governing volatile organic compounds or VOCs, emissions from mixers 19, 20, and 21 are filtered not only through dust collectors, but also through a regenerative thermal oxidizer, or RTO. The RTO allows these mixers to meet their allowed VOC limits stated in the air permits. Preventing and minimizing air pollution. Dust and larger particles from PLT tire optimization are captured by Venturi dust collectors for recycling. This rubber dust makes excellent protective cover for playgrounds and mulch for gardens. Preventing and Minimizing Soil Pollution The Mount Vernon facility sits on approximately 265 acres of land. During routine operations, the environmental impact of the manufacturing processes on the soil of the facility is minimal. However, one persistent source of soil pollution at the facility is discarded cigarette butts. Please do your part to dispose of cigarettes properly in designated smoking facility. Cigarette butts leach chemicals such as cadmium, lead, and arsenic into the soil within an hour of contact with water. It can take up to 12 years for cigarette butts to disintegrate. Preventing and Minimizing Soil Pollution In some instances, 
process oils must be stored outside the walls of the facility for space and safety considerations. In the event of a leak from one of the tanks or associated valves, any spilled material will be caught within containment walls until it can be safely removed. Preventing and minimizing soil pollution. Where concrete secondary containment structures are not possible, spill kits are provided. Earthen secondary containment structures are also provided around the large fuel oil storage tanks on the west side of the facility. Preventing and minimizing water pollution. The Mount Vernon plant uses approximately 16 million gallons of city water a month. That's enough water to supply 110 families water for a year. The Mount Vernon plant is continually striving to use less water by optimizing processes and recycling water where possible. The plant discharges approximately 9 million gallons of water each month into the city sewer system. There are strict pollution limits on industrial waste water, so any improvements in water consumption and pretreatment can greatly impact the amount of quality of this plant's wastewater. Preventing and minimizing water pollution. Similar to air emissions, discharged water is also governed by permits, which are either issued by the IEPA or the City of Mount Vernon. An IEPA water permit governs discharged water from the cooling towers and rainwater runoff. Every month, water sample is taken to prove compliance with IEPA's permit. A permit issued by the City of Mount Vernon governs any water discharge to the sewer system of Mount Vernon. Water sampling is required either daily, weekly, or monthly to prove compliance with this permit. Preventing and minimizing water pollution. Rain and water discharge from the cooling towers runs off into ditches surrounding the plant and exit at the very south end of the property. If that water becomes contaminated, those pollutants eventually make their way to Wren Lake. Preventing and minimizing water pollution. As mentioned earlier in this presentation, all oil tanks are surrounded by concrete or earthen dikes to hold the oil in case of a tank rupture. But if a rail car or truck has a large spill, we have two storm gates equipped with UV sensors which will detect the oil in the ditches and automatically close, containing the oil until remediation is complete. Preventing and minimizing water pollution. When rain or snow melt fill storage tank containment areas to the point where pump motors are endangered, excess water is transferred to this in-ground oil water separator, which removes the oil before the water goes to the ditch. Preventing and minimizing water pollution. Sewage from the plant comes from many more sources than toilets and sinks. Much of the water comes from curing and is contaminated with oil. Before being discharged to the sewer, Water from curing passes through rotary drum filter and two oil water separators. Captured oil is recycled. Another significant source of contaminated water comes from floor cleaning by mops and by powered scrubbers. A centrifuge-based waste water treatment system removes a great deal of solids from this water. Conserving Natural Resources the Mount Vernon plant produces approximately 5.5 million pounds of solid waste a month. That is much garbage as what 865 U.S. homes produce in a year. 4.4 million pounds of that solid waste is recycled, giving us an average recycling rate of around 80%. The U.S. average recycling rate is only around 33%. The plant is continually trying to improve its recycling rate or reduce the amount of solid waste it produces. Please do your part and recycle whenever you can. Conserving natural resources. It is a basic precept that you cannot manage what you cannot measure. With this in mind, Continental has invested over a million dollars in installing the MESDAS monitoring system throughout the facility. The MESDAS monitoring system allows engineering to measure the amount of electricity, steam, and compressed air used by equipment in every department. Conserving natural resources. The MESDAS monitoring system allows engineering to identify large consumers of natural resources. By immediately identifying large consumers of air, steam, or electricity, 
engineering can direct repair efforts to the most critical areas. Environmental policy. The executive board of Continental has issued a policy which applies to all divisions of the company and is binding on every employee. It is called the Environment, Safety, Security, and Health Policy, and it is the driving force behind all environmental protection efforts. Environmental Protection Management. We reconcile human interest, environmental concerns, and corporate interests. This opening statement of the ESH policy reflects the need to balance the three pillars of state sustainability, environmental, social, and economic expectations. Society's expectations for sustainable development, transparency, and accountability has evolved within the context of increasingly stringent legislation, growing pressures on the environment from pollution, overconsumption of resources, and degradation of ecosystems and biodiversity. To help ensure environmental management is consistent throughout all subscriber companies, we and many other have adopted a standard for environmental management known as the ISO 14001, which used to controlling environmental aspects of our activities, products, and services to prevent adverse impacts assist in assuring compliance and improve environmental performance.